Tuesday the 20th of June. Since it has pleased Providence to place me in this station, I shall do my utmost to fulfil my duty. Dear diary, it seems to be that I am now the queen. It's frankly quite bemusing and it's frankly like a dream. Oh, how I prayed for years on end to break free of my past. Dear diary, just look at me, now crowned and free at last. The satin's being ordered and the crystal's being cleaned. The porcelain is polished and the topiary's preened. The horses are now ready and the carriage is now prepped. The gates are swinging open and they're sweeping up the steps. Dear diary, they look to me as if I'm made of gold. It's magically a fantasy from fairy tales of old. But I am not a princess, nor a damsel to be fooled. No, Tyree, now I'm queen, and I intend to rule. So bring me to the masses, to the people on the ground. Let me be the queen to whom they lay their burdens down. May they see behind these eyes, both young and truly scared, a heart born of a lion and a soul that is prepared. Oh, look at them, Drina. Your people are already gathering in the streets to bid you good fortune. My goodness, there are so many of them. How truly touching to see such kind faces so soon. You are their queen, Drina. It is their duty to delight in you. I did not know one could be loved with such vigor. So giddy already? You do know a king is dead. Of course, Sir John. I am quite aware of the tragedy that is at hand. I simply would suggest you watch your expression, Your Majesty. The proletariat are so easily put off, especially by such juvenile mistakes. Do remember, as monarch, you are on a precipice from which it is so easy to fall. I should hate to see you trip so early in your reign. Your concern is noted. Dear Tyree, I seem to be a bit over my head. Shall I walk this path alone or go where I am led? Will they sing my name on high or cry out for my end? Dear Tyree, now I am queen. I pray that I do what I must and that my people come to trust a queen they know is truly good and just. So, Tyree, now I am queen, don't let this soul be lost. Come in. And a good morning, Beatrice. How is your carnage proceeding for the day? I did quite think, Bertie, you were going to leave me and my business in disapproving silence. Yes, well, I've decided my disapproval would be better appreciated if it was of high volume and a consistent dosage. What a task it is to be you, both king and insufferable eldest brother. How do you manage it? Do not let the rumours deceive you, dear sister. I am not as untalented as I appear, as king or as brother. Ah, I see. Eradicate anyone interesting from Amar's life lately? Finally giving Conroy the erasure he's owed? I am not here to vindicate old grudges, Bertie. Merely temper language that could be unbecoming of a queen. <laughs> language? Our mother. <laughs> Give me that. How bad can Miss Morals really be? Oh, mother. <laughs> How coarse indeed. Give me that. Oh, but it was just getting good. Can you blame her for such a thing? Imagine an entire childhood of being heralded as an idiot and incapable of anything, no matter how hard she tried. Mm, yes, imagine that. Oh, don't be like that, Bertie. You know it is not the same for you as it was for her. Oh, of course not. What a plight to fend off barbs from a low-level, social-climbing, backhanded spider who eventually she was able to banish off to some Irish wasteland. I merely had to fend off the Queen of England. And Empress of India. Oh, Bertie, must you be so dramatic? 
Beatrice, what are you doing to those pages? Well, what did you think I was going to do with these pages when I was done? Hide them in some dark archive so they may be found again? Uh, I suppose I thought... I suppose I did not think on it much. Don't you have a country to attend to, Bertie? <sighs> Who's next at the gallows, then? Bertie! All's well, don't tell me. Let me forget. Just as history will. There is no one to forget. Only someone to fondly remember, actually. Ah, oh, so it's not father, then. Bertie! <laughs> 9 a.m. My Prime Minister, Lord Melbourne, came to me. I like him very much and feel confidence in him. He is very straightforward, honest, clever, and a good man. Now listen closely, Your Majesty. I will listen, Sir John, if you have anything useful to say. Now, Drina, Sir John is only trying to help us. Us? First, there is the address to the Privy Council. I have already begun a draft of what it is she should say. These things do include so many formalities. She is surely to muck it up without my assistance. You really are too good to us, Sir John. She really ought to write a letter to the Dowager Queen. It is the least she could do for a woman she is about to ship off to some unfortunate castle. I have already sent my deepest regret to Queen Adelaide, but for the matter of interest, I do not have any intention of removing Her Majesty from her home. Windsor Castle is so unbecoming of a place. She may have it. Do not say you plan to stay here at Kensington. Oh, Drina... This palace is an old and wretched place. You cannot be queen and live in this filth. I cannot be queen mother and live in this filth. No, I dare say a prisoner of war could not live here and feel cared for. Yet these are all things I intend to discuss with my advisers. I am your adviser. No, Sir John. You are a man who has made a powerful enemy in the last decade. Drina, do apologise to Sir John. Come. The Prime Minister is here for you, Mum. Oh, wonderful. Do send him in. If the pair of you would be so kind as to leave, I do intend to see all of my ministers quite alone. Of course, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Lord Melbourne. It is with great regret I heard of the passing of your uncle, His Majesty the King. What eager loyalty that I come to serve you today. Such loyalty to both the late King and this new Queen is appreciated. But of course, ma'am. I have a question for you, Prime Minister. And I do hope I may provide an adequate answer, ma'am. How do you deal with those persons who disagree with you? I have them savagely flogged, ma'am. Ah, yes, but I am your queen. You cannot have me flogged. Ah, I have misunderstood. As uh, you said persons, ma'am, you are not persons but queen. Is there something we disagree upon already? Not as of yet, but I am known to be disagreeable. For any good reason? For every good reason, and good reasons alone, I do become quite convicted about what I see as right and wrong, and often quite impossible to be moved from such position. How would you deal with me, should we disagree? Well, I certainly would not have you flogged, ma'am. Yes, we have determined that option is quite off the table. If you are so convicted, as you say, is it not disagreement, but instead differing perspective? Do you elaborate, sir? That chaise over there, how many paces away is it? Six. Are you quite convicted in that, ma'am? I did just walk the path myself. One, two, three. The chaise was three paces away. I see not your reasoning. From your perspective, you saw a chaise that was six paces away. From mine, I saw one that was only three. Neither was correct and neither was wrong. It is my duty to tell you the view from where I stand and your privilege to ignore me. And what is the view from where you stand now, Lord Melbourne? What is your perspective of this new queen? Shall I be honest, ma'am? I shan't order my prime minister to be dishonest. You are young. I am. 
You are disconnected from court life. Yes, though not a choice made of my own volition. You are viewed as an enigma to some, a child to others, and even a German in certain circles. You are speaking of other men's perspectives now, Lord Melbourne. I asked of yours. I had no perspective before I came in this room. I did not know you, merely of you. The Princess Alexandrina was little more than the ghost of the future. But these words I have shared with Queen Alexandrina, though few, have been promising. Victoria. Ma'am. My second name. I have never much liked Alexandrina, and most greatly detested Drina as an endearment. It shall please me to be crowned Queen Victoria. Then may God save Queen Victoria Regina. You do not disagree in its choosing. A promising first resolution. One among many, I am certain. Well, then, I have the next topic for us to discuss. I am to give a speech to the Privy Council. Yes, ma'am. I have taken the liberty of drawing up a few words for you to inspect. Oh? It is merely a baseline, the commonalities they will be expecting to hear, but I would urge you to add your own voice to it. My own voice? But of course, ma'am. It is you they are coming to hear speak, after all. Not this old politician. They have heard quite enough of that. It is odd, you see, Lord Melbourne. I have had a voice all my life, but never has anyone asked to hear it. The world is asking now, Your Majesty. So it does appear. Well, I shan't wish to keep the good men of the Privy Council waiting. Will you not escort me? We can discuss changes to the address as we go. Proudly and gladly. And you will stay with me through it all. Indeed. Thank you, Lord M. Before we go, might I ask you one more question? But of course, ma'am. Should you think me weak if I admit I am afraid? They will assume that of you, ma'am. These peers of England. Yet they will also assume that it shall paralyse you. Yet how do I change their view? <laughs> oh, oh, but that is just the ticket, ma'am. Tis best not to change the assumption of asses. Just smile and laugh and wave and capitulate, come meet and greet. Pretend to accommodate the men who think they've power to dominate. Think, don't blink and wave. Be coy, be kind, declare your affinity for noble men and noble masculinity. But slowly crush them with femininity. Smile. Beguile and wave. Don't let them know that you know what they're planning. Always be searching and always be scanning. Make them believe they've already tricked you. And you'll be amazed at what you can do. Now wave, now wave, now wave. staring can they tell by looking just how much i'm caring it's quite peculiar oh don't you think lord and what if i stopped waving and just stared back at them just wave just wave just wave bring peace bring calm but always be ready for the evolving threat of impending war yet no your word is one they cannot ignore Grin and win and wave. Say you are young and foolish. I'm foolish. Say you don't know what to do. I do not know what to Listen do. Listen acutely and watch them astutely and know who is watching you too. Oh, prim and poise, yes, that I know how to do, but slick. And sly, oh that, I know better too. Oh, how they'll break when they're face to face with you. They'll break. You'll take and, and wave. wave. Oh, what, what a, a game it is, is playing with the vipers. Hearing the lies and then finding the pipers. Oh, how they think that they've now all but won. But they'll be surprised when they realize.
what has been done right in front of their eyes. Oh, they won't believe what can be achieved with a smile.